Russian opposition political strategist Abbas Galiamov, in an interview for the YouTube channel Now, stated that the level of chaos in Russian politics is increasing every day and this leads to the idea of Putin's death. I told the professor Valery Solovey that I am already ready to believe the version about Putin in the refrigerator, otherwise it will soon be completely impossible to explain the mess that is happening in the country, the expert noted. True, Galiamov then clarified, right now he is not yet ready to confirm Putin's death and still believes that the Russian president is alive. But the Kremlin's completely illogical actions sometimes prompt him to think, maybe he really did die? According to Galiamov, today's chaos within the Russian Federation will decrease if Putin's army continues to achieve success at the front and Putin in the foreign policy sphere. He managed to gather a large number of countries at BRICS and Guterres even came. Of course, this is a foreign policy success that everyone can see. This helps discipline Russians, align them in a row, and become ready to run to carry out Putin's orders. If such successes continue, then the level of chaos will slow down and will not be of such a fateful nature for the Russian Federation, the expert explained. Earlier, Abbas Galiamov responded to rumors about Putin's imminent departure from the post of president of the Russian Federation. Everything is now moving in this direction. It's clear that the system is heading towards collapse, the analyst said. The system needs to be saved. And the best way to save the system is, of course, to get rid of Putin. Thus, the transfer of power in the Russian Federation, according to all laws of logic, should indeed happen. Galiamov believes because if you want to prevent a revolution, you must organize a reform. This is the ABC of political science. The expert emphasized, in some situations, when the contradictions between society and the government or different social groups are so acute, as they are now in the Russian Federation, a revolution becomes inevitable. Everything is moving in this direction now, and the only way to prevent a revolution is to organize a reform and begin to regulate conflict relations. Russian lawmakers on Thursday ratified a pact with North Korea envisioning mutual military assistance, a move that comes as the U.S. confirmed the deployment of 3,000 North Korean troops to Russia. The lower house of the Russian parliament, the State Duma, voted quickly to endorse the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Treaty that Russia's President Vladimir Putin signed with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on a visit to Pyongyang in June. The upper house is expected to follow suit soon. The pact obliges Russia and North Korea to immediately provide military assistance using all means if either is attacked. It marked the strongest link between Moscow and Pyongyang since the end of the Cold War. The US said Wednesday that 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and are training at several locations, calling the move very serious and warning that those forces will be fair game if they go into combat in Ukraine. At the same plenary session, the State Duma also passed a draft budget proposed by the government. It earmarked 32.5% of its spending next year for defense, a record amount and up from a reported 28.3% this year, as Moscow seeks to prevail in its military campaign in Ukraine. The budget proposes spending just under 13.5 trillion rubles, over $145 billion, on national defense. That is about 3 trillion rubles more than was set aside for defense this year and was the previous record. The fighting in Ukraine is Europe's biggest conflict since World War II and has drained the resources of both sides, with Ukraine getting billions of dollars in help from its Western allies. Russian President Vladimir Putin is also looking how to sustain his military effort as spending has placed a huge strain on the Russian economy. Проект федерального закона о ратификации договора о всеобъемлющем стратегическом партнерстве между Российской Федерацией и Корейской Народно-Демократической Республикой. Пожалуйста, включите режим голосования. Кто за? Покажите результат голосования. За 397, против нет, воздержавшись нет. Федеральный закон принят единогласно. Поздравляем. Мы с учетом тех 
потребностей Министерства обороны и других силовых ведомств, которые участвуют в специальной военной операции, составили военный бюджет. В первоочередном порядке деньги на это учтены. Рассматривали вопросы на закрытых статьях, объемы увеличены по сравнению с уровнем текущего года. Это первоочередная наша, наша задача. Здесь и э, непосредственно закупка вооружений военной техники, денежное довольствие военнослужащих, обеспечение, как мы говорили, социальной поддержки семей военнослужащих, модернизация предприятий оборонно-промышленного комплекса. Понимая, что главные позиции – это государственное управление, государственная безопасность и государственная оборона. Мы максимально поддержим эту линию, но в целом, считаем, социально-экономическая политика должна, в конце концов, вылезти из этой ельцинской, гайдаровской, вороватой, разрушительной клеи, которую протоптали. Мы воздержимся при голосовании. На голосование третьего. Законопроект в первом чтении принят. Туда. Вот этого ничего больше не прибавит.